What's going on ladies and gentlemen? So today we're gonna to be playing some Mario Kart 8 and we're gonna be doing this on the Sony A8G OLED. Um, now I'm doing this to show you guys a lot of uh, the gameplay and things like that. And we're just gonna be having some fun now. Normally I'd be able to play some audio, but this is one of those games that I don't know, it just has a really heavy copyright on them and they'll just yank the video down if I try to show you guys the audio and all that good noise. So unfortunately I can't do that, but we can still see the race and we can see what it looks like on the Sony A8G. So uh, this is my first time actually trying this out, at least at this particular arena. Um, I only did like one race so far and uh, this is the Nintendo Switch for anybody who's wondering and uh, I'm excited to get this started. So far, obviously, the colors are looking pretty sweet, but we want to actually win this, so we're going to start taking off here. I got to say, man, I love like the classic games and things like that, but it's always good when you play something new on these OLEDs as well, because they just, for whatever reason, j they just look so good, you know? Like, I don't know what Sony feeds them differently from LG outside of the normal X1 Extreme processing chip, but... There is definitely something different happening for processing that just is not happening on LG. I know some guys may obviously take protest to that and they may obviously disagree with that, but from experience, having many LG OLEDs and really trying to like them, I just, I don't know, man, they just never did this. This special, like, secret sauce. And I think really what it is, is it comes down to that, like, three-dimensional, like, rendering through their X1 Extreme chip. That's what Sony's really doing here. That's just really awesome. But then also, for those that aren't aware, um, not to get too techy, because again, this isn't like the main channel or anything, but um, the X1 Extreme chip has a specific feature called precision color mapping. And precision color mapping does exactly what it sounds like. So um, I don't know if LG has anything like that yet. Um, so maybe that might be something different with the color that we're seeing here, but Sony is just doing it on an entirely different level. And again, it feels a lot like a quantum dot television, even though it's an OLED, which is a big deal, guys, because OLEDs do not have this level of color usually. They usually look pretty, like, washed by comparison. Um, but this, again, as you guys saw, it was holding up pretty darn well against the Q8FN of all TVs, which is a color monster. I mean, you're talking slaying the, the Q90R and all these other types of TVs, and this thing is just banging out just with color. So I really, really like this OLED a lot. Um, it's not perfect, as I did mention, obviously there are some issues, but as you guys see in games like this though, motion's pretty clean, man. Like I'm just floating through the air like a breeze, man. And it's just, it's fun. And I gotta say like, just looking at the color yellows, this TV does really good with like yellows. So I don't know, man, it's something to think about. I hate how like everything these days though is like super like copyright eccentric. It's like, you're gonna get copyrighted for breathing air these days, I'm telling you. Just wait, somebody will figure out how to do it. Um, because, you know, this game is always the most fun when you can hear the action, but of course you can't really do that, YouTube and all that, uh, you know. But either way, at least you're able to see what it's looking like. You can see the rich cyans and these colors popping off the screen. And I'm having a blast showing you guys this stuff, so uh, smack a like on this video if you enjoy. Uh, just kind of hanging out with me here and just playing some video games and stuff like that. Uh, I remember playing the uh, classic N64 version of this game, and uh, it just, I don't know, man. It's not the same, man. It's just not the same as when you have that the new controls and things like that. I don't know, maybe call me a little too new school, but uh, I don't know. I, I, like, I like this game a lot. I'm really salty, actually, that they're not on Mario Kart 9. I feel like, you know, the time that we've already invested into the Mario Kart 8 franchise, you'd think they'd give us something different. At the very least, DLC or something, but you know, that's obviously up to them and it's not up to us consumers, which obviously if it was up to us, we would have the Mario Kart, whatever we'd be on by now. Um, but you guys know what I mean. Now here, this is another screen that I actually find pretty surprising. Again, I don't know how this stuff is gonna look on YouTube, but um, this screen, it's not dimming down to a terrible degree like I found on my uh, C7 last time I tried this out. Um, so yeah, the last time I tried this exact map out actually, I was on the LG OLED C7. So um, not having that same like dim down effect. So it's not as aggressive as LG in that regard as well. So that's really good to see as well. So the technology has improved a bit as far as ABL. I find ABL on the Sony actually works more gradually. It's not as abrupt, if you would. It's not like an instantaneous like shutdown, like you're just dropping down to 150 nits unless it's like something crazy bright out of nowhere. 
Um, so that's good. Usually on LG, it's just kind of like the opposite. It's just like, you know, you get dimmed down out of nowhere and it's just like, well, that sucks. But on menus like that, you're, it, there's no like major dimming or anything like that that happens like out of nowhere. It's all gradually based. So that's really cool. And as I'm driving on this track, by the way, like the red and the luminosity of the colors, everything's just kind of singing true. Like I'm looking at all the little shades and like it's bright enough, most definitely bright enough for me. Um, I'm not in like a bright environment or anything like that. I've got all the lights off in my room and everything. But even when I have the lights on, guys, I mean, really, like this TV is not as dim as people are trying to claim that it is. I mean, it's an OLED, right? We all know it's no Q8FN, but it's definitely not like a 90 nit TV or a 100 nit TV. Like, it's just not doing it like that. And uh, I think a lot of it is the LG guys are just kind of, I don't know, brand loyalist to a fault. Like, they just, they won't stop. And I don't think you'll ever change people like that. But I think the big thing here is to just keep in mind that with all these brands and all these TVs, everybody's going to have their favorite. I think just being realistic about what we have here in the market is, I think, a good approach to making sure that we don't get crap products because I mean the technology won't change if you don't admit what's wrong with it and I think honestly this A8G is fantastic I think it's got a long way to go with motion but I think overall as a product I think it's pretty darn good man I really do I'm enjoying it and I don't know again how much of the brightness you're able to see how much of the color you're able to see but as I'm riding on uh, Rainbow Road here it's it's pretty dope again this is that uh, classic N64 Rainbow Road and I love riding on this one. This one's just so sick, man. Freaking sick. I feel like I'm gonna get crushed by that thing eventually. But so far I'm just kind of skating by, just drifting, doing what I do. Get out of here with that trash. You're not gonna get me today. Oh yeah, we're out of there. And we collect our coins. Oh, I got hit. Oh, that's dirty. They always clutch it like that, bastard. How many of you guys have had things like that happen in Mario Kart where like last second they just come up and they just take the win you know yeah man this is pretty sick though not gonna lie so that was good that that map on uh, Rainbow Road there that was a lot of fun now uh, let's see where else should we race right I'll race at uh, Moo Moo Meadows and now what I want to try to do I don't know how successful I want to be at this I'm gonna try to get one of my lights and I'm gonna try to turn them on uh, just so you can see like even in a brighter kind of room it's not that bad. Let's see. Um, what light do I want to turn on? Let's see here. I don't really have anything too terribly bright, so I'll just, I don't know. Just, nah, it's, it's just like a regular lamp, though. That's not going to be bright enough. Hmm. I'm trying to find a light that I can just turn on that's going to be like this like power boat of a light. Uh, let's see. I'm like moving all around my room if you can hear me. Just like boom. Okay, that should be more than bright enough. Right? Okay, so I've got the brightest light I've got in my room on. And now we're just going to try to go into the game mode and try to play the game just like this, you know? Brightest light, what does it look like? I mean, you can see reflections from the lamp up top, but I mean, really though, it's nothing like. You know what I mean? It's nothing crazy. It's nothing horrible. And as you guys see, I mean, look at the brightness of this TV. It's more than holding up with like the brightest light in my room. And I think this is the situation most people will find themselves in. Even with your brightest light, I mean, this is still going to come out pretty darn awesome. Um, the only thing is obviously the reflection. It's not a reflection handling monster. I think that's apparent here. But either way, it's still pretty sick. So now we're racing at Moo Moo Meadows. Also my first time doing that on this TV. I uh, gotta say so far I'm digging it. It looks pretty sick. I mean like you can see like every little cloud in the background with like their own hue and I think that's important because obviously you want color. So as we're driving around I mean I, I'm noticing clouds are like just so distinct on this TV like even when I was playing like Forza man that the clouds are just crazy on this TV. Little details man little details. Sony has definitely captured that this year quite well. Alright, so... I mean, obviously, it's it's an easy track. It's not like a crazy, wild, you know, ultra-dynamic track or anything like that. 
but it is enough that you guys can see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about brightness and colors and all that fun stuff, you know? Oh, we almost hit a cow there. We don't want to do that. All right, so see if I can get this all three coins. I don't know if I got all three. It's so much more, I guess, static and boring for me when I don't have the audio on. But I mean, I literally have no choice but to do it like this because they are not playing around. The YouTube police are out here, guys, and they are not friendly. These kinds of people are those legal people that'll sit and claim a video for literally one second of content being seen or heard. And even still, it might actually end up getting claimed just because they're seeing Mario's face. I mean, that's how petty things have gotten today. So just be mindful of that. But at least you guys are seeing color. And that's what I'm really trying to do here is to showcase this TV and uh, kind of review Mario Karts on uh, this particular OLED. It's not a review of the game per se, but just kind of reviewing the game's performance and how it holds up. And I'd say if you had Mario Karts 8, if you had this particular television, you're going to be pretty happy because it's pretty darn cool. Though I will say, like, from memory, comparing it to what I remember from the Q8FN, Q8FN definitely slamming off those colors far more amazingly. So if you're a color junkie, then that's definitely something that you're going to prefer. But for an OLED, not bad. So I'm going to end this video here. If you guys want to see uh, specific games, just let me know and I'll see if I actually have those games. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.